Hello and welcome back. Okay. You see this now? Yes, we can. We can see it. Yep. Hello and welcome back to the Marketing Cloud Administrator Bootcamp, Day 5. And thank you everyone for joining us today. And we appreciate your interest to learn Marketing Cloud and your passion to upskill. I am Jyotsna Bitra and I lead the Salesforce Marketers Group in Phoenix. I am joined by Naji and our guest speaker Manish today. A few housekeeping items before we get started. This session is being recorded and a copy of the presentation and the link to the recorded re recording will be sent in an email after the 20 hours uh, of the session. If you have any questions during the webinar, please feel free to post them in the question box in the GoToWebinar control panel. We will try to answer as many questions as possible at the end of the presentation. If you have any unanswered questions, please reach out to us via our Slack channel where our speakers and fellow members are happily answering the questions. And for any other additional resources and links, please be sure to follow our other channels on our Slack group, homework and resources. And we would love to hear your feedback and comments. Please post your comments on Twitter using the hashtag mcadmin 2 hero and tag PHX B2C Eugene. So let's start with discussing about what we are grateful for today. So I am grateful for all the wealth of resources that all the community members are putting. One of them is the SFMC Geeks. So here we have so many blogs that are written by various community members managed by Leslie and uh, Natalie. There are so many uh, blogs that are in there which would be helpful to you. And here you can see various categories and um, the um, blogs about AmScript and SQL which is uh, used in the marketing cloud. And this is a mega list of all the wealth of resources that are available. So um, all the official Salesforce blogs and videos and uh, documentation that is currently available and also the blogs put up by various members and gurus in the marketing cloud and these are the physical and electronic books that are available and here's a list of all the communities that are available in the marketing cloud where you can ask your questions get your answers and get all the other information and various tools that are used and uh, the YouTube channels and other information in here. The other resource that I would like to uh, bring to your attention is the sfmccurated.com where all the content from various blogs are put together in here. So it is like a single place where you can search all content related to the marketing cloud. So there are currently around 30 different blogs that are integrated into this one. So you can just type on something over here and you can find the information from all the relevant blogs in here. And the other one is my own blog. So in one of our previous sessions, I have uh, discussed about the technical marketers meetings and the SFMC lookup answers, which were organized by Gilda. And if you have missed any of the previous sessions, you can find all the list of all the recordings and the presentations over here and also the SFMC lookup answers all the recordings are shared over here in this blog and here is another blog post which talks about all the videos it's mostly about the videos that are currently available so as we have been doing more virtual meetings and all the meetings are recorded this is a list of all various uh, meetings that are done by the community members and uh, shared I'll start with the Salesforce uh, webinars that were in, that are in here, the Tech Launch series. It has a nice list um, of so many topics in here. And if you want to get started, um, here's a list that's uh, by the Salesforce as well. And uh, the technical marketers meetings and the SFMC lookup answers. And these are uh, below all various uh, meetings and uh, session recordings that are con conducted by the community members. And here's a list of all YouTube channels 
that are maintained and managed um, by the community members. The first uh, two are by the Salesforce, and we have Elliot's um, MC Chat YouTube channel, and uh, we have many other YouTube channels listed in here. And these are the mega blocks. Um, there are so many blocks that are available in the marketing cloud. So th these are the blocks that sums up all the um, uh, information from all the blogs or have greater content that is in here and a list of podcasts that are available and also a small list of the Powdot webinars and YouTube channels. This list is not exhaustive, but it is growing. I try to add as, many inform as much of information as possible. Please share what you're grateful for today on our Twitter channel. So here's a quick recap of what we have discussed so far. We have uh, looked at few of the marketing cloud products. We have uh, discussed about the subscriber data management, which includes a uh, contact model, data extensions, attribute, attribute groups and relations, contact deletion, profile and preference center. We have also uh, discussed about uh, some of the setup features, that is the users, how do we create them, how do we set up the roles and permissions, how do we create custom roles and business units. As you're aware, setup takes up to 38% of the overall exam weightage, and there may be 22 questions on setup alone. So today we will move on and dive deeper into the setup features, which includes account settings, um, feature settings, security settings, what are the best practices, um, install packages, how uh, we create the FTP accounts, file locations, and many more. And upcoming, the next session is um, by Elliot, and we're going to discuss about all the marketing cloud extension products. And here's a list of our all upcoming sessions. So the next session is going to be on uh, the 10th of September. And the next week, it's going to be on channel management. That, that is mostly about the email studio configuration, journey builder, and MC Connect. There's a lot for us to discuss today. Now, without further ado, let's turn it over to Manish. Manish, uh, let me know if you're in. Hello all, welcome again. So excited to be part of this and thanks for joining. So it's good evening, good morning. People, I see people join from different parts of the world. So nice to see uh, all of you. So let's get started. So I'll be uh, just an introduction. So I am a solution architect. Uh, I working with CPR in Singapore. Uh, I'm a Salesforce MVP and marketing champion. I've got few certifications done, three in marketing cloud to be specific. I also lead this uh, Singapore developer group, been running this for over eight years now, I think from 2013 onwards. Uh, I also blog at sfdcfanboy.com, so that's my online nick also. I also have uh, uh, launched few courses on Udemy, specifically for marketing cloud. Uh, brief on that so this marketing cloud email specialist so those who are interested in further uh, exploring marketing cloud so they this this is the one that i created for them so almost 1500 students enroll in this so you can use this to uh, see whenever you are uh, free to explore further and there is marketing cloud consultant as well almost 1,000 students on it. So overall 2,500 students currently enrolled in my courses. So, so if you want to explore further and dive deep into uh, marketing cloud consultant and email specialist, so feel free to check out these as well. So for today, I'll be uh, covering setup part two. So the part one is already covered uh, last week. So today I'll be covering the platform tools, features, settings, and mostly on the security settings and uh, all whatever is part of the setup. So as you know, setup is 38%, so almost 22 to 23 questions are covered. So here's a tip from my side. So your pass percentage, so how to get how pass this certification easily. So uh, the pass percentage, as you know, is 67%. So your target to get right 
is 41 questions out of 60. So if you get 41 right, you will clear that minimum uh, minimum uh, percentage. So 41 questions so out of 41, 23 are from this setup. That's a lot of number, a lot of questions from this setup itself. So once if you are very much perfect in setup, your target will reduce. If you get 23 right, then your target is only 18 questions. So 18 questions out of 37 remaining. So that is like 50 percent. So even if you get uh, one question, one alternate question right from the remaining uh, topics, then you will easily clear. So the setup becomes an important topic in this uh, certification exam because it covers almost like 40 percent. So once you are perfect in this, even if you are weak on the other ones, uh, you would be still able to clear this. But of course, this is not your target. Your target should be to get all 60 out of 60. So, but I'm saying this, uh, how important this setup becomes in clearing this certification. So, uh, so this is a screen from the setup instance. So the first, uh, the one that I that is highlighted here is a part two where The, uh, the one that I highlighted is the part two, data management, platform tools, apps, feature settings, company setting and security. So this one we will get started with. So the uh, so I'll start with platform tools first, then go into settings, then finally I'll, I'll come back to the data management. So platforms tools, under platform tools we have apps. So first is Salesforce integration and install packages. So Salesforce integration. So this section in the setup is to connect your marketing cloud account with your service cloud or Salesforce instance. So when you check this account, when you check in this setup, you will see whether whether you, this instance is connected to Salesforce or not. If it is not connected, you will see this connect account. Once you click on connect account, you will be able to uh, launch your sales cloud and enter the credentials and then you'll be able to connect. So from your uh, purely talking about certification perspective, so the, how would you connect uh, your marketing cloud account with say uh, Salesforce? How do you know which user is connected to this? So to know that you have to go into setup apps and Salesforce integration, you will see which account or which Salesforce org it is connected to. And also it will tell whether it's a sandbox or not. So that is the few things that you need to know when you want to check into Salesforce integration. So there is the more, the other important one is scope by user. How the connection is done between these sales cloud or service cloud and the marketing cloud. So scope by user will tell you this is like sharing. So the, the connected user, the user who logs into the sales cloud and who can send the emails. So what audience he can target is based on based on this setting scope by user once you select this scope by user it means the user should have access to only few uh, records only then he will be able to target those uh, audience if the user doesn't have access to a lot of the other reports and campaigns he won't be able to target so this is like a restricted based on the user that is logged in if you set this scope by user as unchecked that means this it will consider the system access. So irrespective of the user permissions on the records and the reports and campaigns, he'll be able to target or send emails to everyone. So scope by user is to restrict the access for that uh, user. So that's on Salesforce integration. Then you have installed packages. Under installed packages, this is like your app exchange. How when you install a product from your app exchange, those installed packages will come up in this section in, under install packages. So here I'm highlighting one of them. Uh, it's Query Studio. So if you want to see, there are other items as well. So Query Studio is one app exchange product that I install in my system, and here you will see the component permissions. So Query Studio, whether it has what permissions it requires and who has access to that. So if I click on that uh, query studio, so there is details. It will see what components are involved in this and what permissions. Basically, this app 
uses in in your marketing cloud instance so here you can see uh, there is it is using email saved content automations so this app needs permissions on for example list and subscriber so it acts it needs permissions on read write for to access all the data extensions and also approvals and calendars and campaigns so basically to understand which app is using what permissions and also under licenses here you will see which users are, are given this permission and which business units are given this perm, uh, permission for so if you want to give a future users as well you can select this box license all current and future users so that means any new user you add into marketing cloud account will by default get access to this uh, third party app query studio and you can install uh, or re uninstall and change the permissions of the install apps in this install packages so that's on uh, install packages then moving ahead we'll have uh, as you can see feature settings so under feature settings we have content builder email studio mobile studio so there are a lot of things to be covered here uh, i'll try to cover everything under this so under feature settings uh, first is content builder so under content builder we have three approval settings campaign settings and content builder settings so basically these settings enable you to change or configure few features in marketing cloud so the first one is approval setting so marketing cloud has this nice feature of approvals so before you send out an email if you want the email to be approved by a few of your the users like your client then you can use this feature so once you enable it uh, you can enable it from this approval settings so uh, unapproved emails once you enable this feature at all overall you will not be able to send emails which are unapproved so every email must be approved before it it has to be sent once you enable this feature so you can create there are two types of uh, workflows or uh, approval processes one is standard approval the second is two tier approval so under standard approval you have three step uh, approval process so there's submitter reviewer and final approver so submitter is the one so once you you build the email uh, you submit the up email for approval so the next whoever is in the reviewer stage the reviewer will review that email and he will make some changes or he will uh, suggest changes then approve it once the re reviewer approves it then it will go into the final approver and the final approval will approve it or reject it again once it is approved then uh, the email is ready to be sent out so these these are like three step process uh, three level of uh, approvals in this so that is a standard approval uh, so in setup uh, approval settings you can define who is who whom you want to be the submitter whom you want to be the final approver and reviewer so this is standard approval uh, in the two tier approval uh, there is one step less so there is submitter and approval so it will be faster so there's no like final approver or reviewer so the submitter will submit the uh, email for review and the approval will review and approve it, approve it directly so there's only two steps in this so that's on approval settings then you have campaign settings then you have campaign settings under campaign settings you have three options uh, or three configuration that you can uh, choose one is campaigns request and notification under campaigns so this is like uh, if you want a default campaign owner to be set then you can use this feature uh, of course this is optional whenever you create a campaign you want a default owner to be set for that campaign you can use this option then you have the request so this use process this will enable you what so you've already created the approval process so here you will enable it so once you select this checkbox use process that means the uh, the approval process is enabled and you will select which approval process to run and then you have notifications under notifications there are two settings so you can enable approvals via email or you can enable comments via email so once the reviewer or the approver receives the email that a hey, uh, there is an email to be reviewed they can directly 
send the comments from the email or they can directly uh, approve the email from from with, within the email itself so these are nice little features that you can use for approval processes so all these uh, are under this campaign settings then finally you have content builder settings so these are features previously these features were not available in the setup these were we had to raise a lot of support tickets to enable the features so uh, these features once you enable again it depends on the user permissions as well so if the user has the necessary permissions based on the roles and the permission that he is assigned only then he will still access have access to these features so from the setup you are basically enabling that feature you are not giving the permission for the users to use this permit uh, use this feature it will still depend on the user's role and permissions what access he has so there are a few uh, features that you can enable in content builder settings so the first one is email auto save so when you're building an email and you want to save uh, you have to click on that save button but once you enable this email auto save it will automatically save so you don't need to click keep clicking on save uh, for every few seconds to not lose your work so this is a nice feature so you can just click on edit and enable it uh, once it is enabled the email will be auto saved whenever you make some changes it will be auto saved then you have enterprise sharing so this is uh, useful when you have different uh, uh, business units when you have multiple business units you want to share the information between one business unit to other business unit you have to enable this uh, enterprise sharing once you have enabled this you will see uh, the option to share your uh, content or data extensions or data then you have predictable file urls so i'll take all the questions at the end because uh, there are a lot of topics to be covered but uh, we'll definitely get back to the questions uh, uh, once we finish the topics yeah or I'll take a pause in between to answer a few of the questions. Yeah. So the next one is predictable file URL. So this is uh, again is uh, add-on feature. So if you are uploading your content into Marketing Cloud, let's say you upload an image, so you can set the so it will define the name of the file in marketing cloud it is auto generated it's a unique identifier so once you enable this predictable file urls it will it will uh what it will uh it will what do you say it will attach the file name to the end of the uh, file name in marketing cloud so whatever file name you upload that file name is restored in the file when you visit the marketing cloud instance as well so it will have that url file name in the url itself then we have editor configuration so this uh, are few tabs that you can enable in in your content builder uh, like blocks content tab layout tab design tabs uh, so all this as i said you can enable it but it will still depend on the user permission whether they have access to this or not then blog group configuration so these are like con content so if you want for example html so these are uh, different types of content blocks that you can create in your marketing cloud instance so you can enable this so only after this is enabled the user has the option uh, to create a content block with html or he has the option to create a button with a content button content block similarly a b testing dynamic content uh, einstein image horizontal uh, even interactive email all those features can be enabled from content builder settings so your uh, exam questions could be if you want to enable email interactive which do you look into content builder settings or do you look into feature settings or do you look into setup uh, home or setup assistant so so you need to be aware of which feature is available under which setting so basically when you know because if you're talking about email interactive we know it's about content so it should be in content builder settings so uh, not uh, very hard to know but uh, it can be confusing if the features is a uh, common one 
so these are under content builder settings so under content builder uh, setting basically you have the enabling of different tabs and few features like email auto save file urls and then the content uh, enabling the different types of content content blocks then going ahead into email studio so under email studio there are a lot of uh, uh, management to be done so uh, so this can be accessed so we are now in setup and email studio right so this can be also accessed from email studio admin so under email studio admin you will see the same settings so basically you are having from address sender profiles delivery profiles send classification and reply mail management all this can be configured from email studio basically what uh, salesforce has done is they have given uh, brought that up and put it under setup so you can do the settings directly from setup itself instead of going into email studio and admin so i'll not go in deep into these details because you have this mark email uh, there's a webinar purely on email studio there you will be covered with all these features uh, so it's the same settings that are also available from setup similarly uh, you have mobile studio and uh, mobile connect so the admin part from different studios are brought into setup. So once we have all this email studio, the next one is email optional features, test sense, uh, threshold, subject, validation, URL expression. So these are not part of your email studio. These few of these are also part of uh, email studio admin, but I'll be covering these because uh, these are uh, very important to know. So some of the optional features that you can enable uh, from the setup are HTML paste. So this is like, uh, if you want to create an email, you have different options, whether you want to create from a template or whether you want to create from an HTML. So only if you enable this option, you will see the HTML option. Then double opt-in, this is a nice feature. Uh, if you want your, if your subscribers have given you the, email address and you want to double opt-in or verify the email address then you can enable this feature and uh, work on uh, create an email once you send this email to the subscribers you will receive uh, the, the customers will receive uh, an email to verify again so this is like double double verification of your email so this will avoid a lot of uh, uh, un lot of invalid emails in your in your in your marketing cloud subscriber list from name drop down of users so when you are sending an email you will see the from name so what should be the from name of the sender so generally you define all this in your sender profiles the what should be the sender uh, sender name and from name and from email address right so you also have the option to select the user as the sender profile so if you are, let's say I'll give an example. So if you are, there's this, uh, one of your marketing cloud users is also your CEO. The CEO, if you want to send an email based on CEO as a user to all your subscribers, announcing some important news to all your subscribers, then you can enable this feature and you will have the option to select user as your sender profile. So the uh, user details will be shown as the from address and the from name. So this, once you enable this, you will see that option of uh, from name drop down. Then you have send throttling. Uh, this is to uh, throttle your sends throughout a specific time period. Uh, so for example, uh, the use case for this send throttling is once you enable this feature, you will have the option to select. So let's say you are sending an email to 100K subscribers and you want to send it from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. only during working hours. So you can set the send throttling hours from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And the emails will be sent from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Every one hour it will automatically split and also send across throughout that uh, send throttling period. So the, all the emails will not be blasted at 9 a.m. It will be throttled throughout that duration. So once you enable it here, uh, you will see the option in your email studio whenever you're sending your emails you will see the send throttling option and there you can define what time period you want to send that email so this is specific for each email send 
it's not for the overall marketing cloud account so for each send you can define what is the time duration that you want to throttle that send so only after you enable it here you will see the option in your email studio or wherever you're sending the emails from uh, so you'll see the option in your user initiated emails or even the uh, a guided send send flow yeah then this is bcc emails uh, this option once you enable it you have the option to send every email that you send you will have the option to send it to a, another email address so that will be bcc address so this is basically if you want to track all the emails that are being sent or if you want to send all your emails to your customer care department that are being sent out then you can use this feature next one is text only email uh, if you if you if your customers of if you want to simplify the email creation process and remove specific options then you can just turn off this uh, the text only email or if you want to turn it on you will see the html view as well as the text only uh, text email as well to define but if you want to simplify the email creation process you can turn it off you will directly create the emails in html this uh, and the text only email will be automatically converted so we have covered email optional features optional features as uh, you saw those are features that you can enable without raising a support tickets uh, then you have test send thresholds these are a couple of uh, uh, settings that you can do on your test sense specifically so when you're so the first one is warning threshold and next is maximum threshold so warning threshold uh, the setting as you can see is set up as 25 so that means whenever you are doing a test send if it crosses or if it reaches 25 it will give you a warning or a notification saying that you are sending 25 emails in this particular test send so this this is just to warn uh, so that you will not uh, this is uh, this helps when you're sending by mistake if you're sending it to a large group this will help you in identifying or, or if you selected a wrong de then this will help in identifying uh, informing you hey, you have uh, crossing that limit that you have set and the next one is maximum threshold so uh, so maximum threshold is a maximum number of emails or test sends that you can do within that one particular send. So you cannot bypass, so here it is set as thousand. So in your test send, if you have 2000 uh, sends that you're sending, it will only send the thousand. So it will not send to the remaining thousand. Whereas the warning, it will only warn you. So once it reaches 25, it will warn you. So you can uh, click on okay, or you can bypass that uh, warning and still send that uh, email. Whereas maximum threshold, it will not, you cannot bypass this uh, setting. So that's the difference between warning and a maximum threshold. Maximum is your upper limit and warning is when you reach a certain number, you will get a warning, just a notification and you can bypass that notification, continue to do the test sense. Then you have uh, subject head and pre-header validation. This is also helps in your email, uh, a test sense also or whenever you whenever you build your emails there are few uh, let's say you have a test email and the subject has test in it and you and you are ready you did you did all the testing and the email is ready to be sent out to all your customers then you click on send but you forgot to change the subject the subject still has test so to get a notification before even sending the email if you want uh, Salesforce to notify you that the subject contains test word, then this setting is useful. So you can define the list of words here, test, draft, proof, or sometimes you also use dev or prod in your email subject, then this will help. So this helps you in not sending the test emails to live customers. So you can define as many words as you want in this uh, whenever there's the subject or even the pre-header contains these words it will alert you and and then you can change the subject and do the correct send then you have url expiration so whenever you send out an email you have this uh, few links that are auto enabled in your email like the view as web page uh, you will see this uh, in the top of the email uh, which has when you click on that link it will show the 
email in the web browser, right? So that URL, how long do you want that URL to be uh, enabled? So that setting is under setup URL expiration. So the minimum you can set is 60 days. So by default, it is 60 days and you can set up to maximum of two years. So whenever the email is sent out, that URL is available before this expires. And also you have the option to once, let's say it is, you set it as 60 days and the URL has expired. So by default, it will show that it's it will show a marketing cloud uh, default message. The URL has expired. It's a standard message. But if you want to set a different uh, URL, it will be once anyone clicks on that uh, URL, it will go to that page and you can define another URL. It will redirect from that URL to the custom URL that you define here. So after expiry, it will go to the custom defined URL. Or if you don't want to set custom defined, it will show the standard uh, system default with the message that the URL has expired. So that setting is uh, done under URL expiration. So we have covered all the email studio settings. Then we have mobile studio. <laughs> so under mob mobile studio, we have group connect, mobile connect and mobile push. So again, uh, these settings are pulled from different studios and shown up in your marketing cloud setup. So again, use these settings. You can access them from your mobile connect, mobile studio settings as well. And the same settings you will see the, there as well. So the most important one, uh, all of them are same. Mobile connect, uh, I mean, in terms of settings, there are similar. So, so I'll focus on mobile studio for now. So here you can define uh, your keywords, your short, uh, what is the short code that is defined uh, for this mobile connect. The most important one, uh, as you see on your right hand side, this is send blackout. So you can set out your blackout period. So once you set up a blackout period, let me show. So once you set up, so you can enable it here and you can set up a time period. So once you set up this time period, the email, so the, the SMS will not be sent during this period. So if you don't want the SMS to be sent out after hours or after late night, so let's say you can set from 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. or 4 a.m., you don't want any SMS to be sent out to users, then you can enable this send blackout and set the time based on that. There are a few things to note here. So let's say you have set the time as from 10 p.m. You don't want any SMS uh, to be sent out. So you set the blackout period from 10 p.m. onwards and you have a send that is sent out at 9 p.m. So you have already scheduled a send 9 p.m. It is started and the SMS are being sent out and it will take let's say it takes two hours. So from 9 p.m. to 11 p.m. The emails are to be the SMS are to be sent out. So after 10 p.m., it will still send out the SMS. Even though you set the blackout period, the SMS will be still sent out because the SMS send has already started. So you cannot start something in your blackout period, but if it's already started previously, it will still send out the SMS. So that is one very important thing to note when you are enabling the blackout. And the time zone, uh, so these are a few important notes uh, specifically for, so these also apply to your, uh, the push notifications, the group connect and the mobile connect. So the time zone, that uh, the time that you set, it is based on your account time zone. And this is the one example that I uh, just mentioned. If your send starts at 9 p.m. and it will take two hours, so 9 to 11 p.m., but your blackout is at 10 p.m., the send still continues until 11 p.m. and it finishes. But if you are trying to schedule a new send starting at 10 p.m., which is your blackout period, you will not be able to schedule that. So basically, sends do not pause at the send blackout. That's a. Then you have a, you can set the send blackout in Mobile Connect as well as in your Journey Builder. So there's there's a difference between Mobile Connect if you send uh, set set this send blackout in Mobile Connect and it's different in Journey Builder. In Journey Builder, the send blackout window completely prevents messages from sending. 
and also there is no queuing as such so once it reaches the black operator it will stop that uh, send and it will not send it afterwards so that's the difference so if you set it in mobile connect it will uh, uh, it will you have the option to it will be queued later once the blackout period is finished it will you can schedule the sense again so that's the difference between uh, enabling it in mobile connect from setup and journey builder so the same also applies for your group connect and mobile push so they also have blackout periods in group connect and uh, mobile push as well then you have tags so this is a simple uh, nice feature uh, tags can be used to group or categorize your content or even your journeys or campaigns if you want to tag few of these uh, campaigns into under one campaign tag so you can enable these tags here once you uh, create all the tags here in your marketing cloud content builder you can tag each individual image or email under this particular tag basically to help you to categorize all the content into different uh, groups so we have covered apps feature settings there are a lot of features uh, that we covered uh, you maybe you can still go back and uh, refresh one before your exam you have to refresh again so there are email studio settings features mobile studio group connects there are a lot of features that we covered now we move into the security settings or the company settings so under company settings we have account settings subscription details alert manager and few other things Uh, let's start with account settings. So account settings, it will give you uh, basically an overview of how your account looks like. So you have your account name. So that is your BU business unit name. Account ID is the business unit ID. And you have email display name, email reply address. These are the default uh, email display name. Once you send out an email, what is the default email display name you can set or the reply address that you can set number of business units you can see it here number of active users you can see here so this uh, is important to know under account settings that you have access to know how many active users you have instead of going into users and seeing the total number you could come into account settings and look into the number of active users and the number of business units you have and a couple of uh, API related, so WSTL the, and the endpoint URL. If you want to connect uh, to this marketing cloud instance, you have to use this endpoint URL uh, to connect to. And it will also display your time zone. So this is a time zone that I mentioned in send blackout. This time zone is considered. This is your account, marketing cloud account time zone and the date format that you want to display in your instance then you have brand builder and subscription details so okay a few other things under account settings you will also see html header and footer these are the default html header and footer for all your emails of course you can change this when you're building the email if you don't want to use this uh, then you can have your own header and footer but these are the default ones you see and you can also see sender authenticated domain so if your domain if your marketing cloud account the sender authentication package is enabled you will see a checkbox here that means the sender authentication is done for this account uh, sender authentication package is a huge topic that will also be covered under your email studio uh, but how do you know whether your account is already uh, the sender authentication domain is already enabled so you will see it under account settings so going ahead with the brand builder this is a i would say limited feature of branding your marketing cloud account uh, so this is not related to your emails or sms this is purely related to what you see in your marketing cloud account when you log in so if you want to change the colors and the logo of your uh, sorry you cannot change the logo but if you want to uh, so sorry you can still change the logo uh, and also the colors that you want to display once you log into your marketing cloud account so you can set that set it up using brand builder 
so you can uh, uh, browse or send set your logo here and the colors here so there are four uh, different locations where these brand builder uh, colors will be changed once you enable it so the four are marketing cloud login page so the branding will appear in your marketing cloud login page email page marketing cloud application the whole entire ui and the profile and subscription center the standard profile and subscription center will also have this branding uh, so you can set the colors for individual the background and the uh, top color and the background bottom color for each individual pages that are available here uh, once you upload your logo right it will also suggest it will analyze your logo as well and it will give you the list of uh, it will automatically few select few uh, colors from that uh, from that logo itself but uh, if you want to change you can still change and use the hash code here to change a uh, few things to note uh, this is also very important uh, you will see questions on this as well of course all the topics that we discussed you will see questions on them so you can use your brand builder for your standard profile center with logo and colors uh, so the brand builder does not allow you to change the ui structure it will only allow you to change the colors and the branding so you cannot change you cannot move things from one place to other so it's not like your process uh, like page builder it's not like page builder it's only the branding and you cannot change text within the standard profile center using brand builder of course you can change uh, different things under standard profile center but uh, using brand builder you'll be um, only change the uh, logo and colors and you can have uh, so this once you create this brand builder you can enable it for each business unit so one business unit you want this particular setting uh, particular colors to be available so you can do this under associate your brand once you create the brand you can associate that brand with different business units then your subscription details these are nothing but your license when when was when was the marketing cloud account purchased and until what date it is valid and you also have quick access to this email send report from your subscription details then going ahead we have security under security we have different settings again uh, security settings these settings will also change based on your uh, the options that you are available will also change based on your uh, licensing also so multi-factor authentication is a new one if you are into a old instance you might not see this multi-factor authentication uh, so let's go ahead into the security settings there are a lot of security features uh, that you can configure the list is long uh, i'll try to cover as fast as possible considering the time uh, and these are very important as well so i cannot skip these. so these are very important uh, because you need to i mean not just from uh, admin certification perspective but from your uh, setting up your marketing cloud instance as well even 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 in your exam you'll see a lot of questions on this so this is very important uh, so under security settings the first three are these session timeout so a session timeout is if you logged into a marketing cloud instance and you uh, keep it open on your browser and you go away from your system when after how long do you want the system to be automatically logging you out so that is set in this session timeout so it's a session timeout so and the best practice as suggested by salesforce is 20 minutes so again these best practices are very important so even your exam questions will be based on the best practices not what or uh, not what you follow in your uh, marketing or uh, in your company so we still have to know what is the best practice only then you will be uh, able to clear the answer it correctly in your in your in your exam so the default so the best practice for a session timeout is 20 minutes and the next one is required secure connection https so that means uh, once you enable it uh, the users uh, you will log into your marketing cloud account using https url itself uh, note that this does not apply to your api instance this is purely for a ui perspective uh, how you want uh, people to log into your marketing cloud account 
and enable click jacking protection this is to prevent uh, malicious pages or uh, different uh, attacks from other uh, instance or from external from your browser so this basically stops browser from loading your marketing cloud pages in different frames so it will only allow you to log in uh, from this marketing cloud instance it will not if you have a frame set up in different instance uh, you'll not be able to load this marketing cloud frame in that uh, so as i said there are a lot of features here so we have usernames and logins the features are here i'll definitely go through all of them so first one is login expires after inactivity so this is so if you are you have already have few users logged into your system and they're not logging in for a few months or a few days when do you want that to be expired so the user will be disabled after after uh, you set this uh, duration so the default not sorry the best practice is 90 days so if you set it as 90 days so the login expires after inactivity if you set it as 90 days if the user has not logged in to your marketing cloud account for 90 days they will automatically disable so again you have to enable it or you have, uh, you have to enable it to give them back the access and involve invalid logins before lockout so if someone tries to log into your account and tries different uh, wrong passwords how many times you can allow so the best practice is three and minimum username length the best practice is eight characters again you can change up to six characters or 12 characters but the best practice you have to remember that it is eight and few on the password policies as well so you might see these are i mean these are very uh, standard ones but uh, and you might say these are very silly or, or not so important but these are very important as I said, for security as well as from your from your admin certification, these are very important. So minimum password length, you can the best practice is eight characters. Again, it can vary. You can set it to six or even twelve. Enforce password history, so you can set it as uh, eight as the best practice, so it will remember the passwords of eight passwords of the user. So every time the user changes the password, it, do, it should not match with the last eight passwords and user passwords expire in 90 days uh, as a best practice so after every 90 days uh, the user has to change the password and you have few options to exclude few users from this setting so if you do, if you want to exclude your api users from your password expiry generally people set this as yes so you want to exclude your api users so you don't want to change the password of your api users but that is not the best practice the best practice is still to ex not exclude api users you want everyone users password to expire in 90 days and then you can also schedule a time with your api users to change the api username and password sorry the password whenever necessary same with ftp users if you want to exclude ftp users from password expiry you can enable then uh, if you want a confirmation email to be sent whenever a password change you can enable it so the user will receive the pass uh, that a notification that the password has been changed this is to prevent if someone else changes password so you will have an instant uh, notification to log back in and see yeah identity verification settings uh, these are also very important so identity verification uh, whenever uh, you log into your marketing cloud account through your app or your browser it will identify or verify or authenticate that browser so that is the identity verification uh, i'm sure if you have already logged into even your salesforce instead not marketing cloud account you will receive the verification code in your email right so that is the identity verification settings and business unit identify if you want the identity verification to be at business unit level you can set it up at business unit identity verification and how long uh, you want the verification code to be active so you can set it up to 15 or 30 minutes so you log into your account you receive the verification code and after you set it as 30 minutes for example and after 13 minutes you have not logged in and you try to log in again and the pass the code will expire after 30 minutes so you have to regenerate the verification code again based on this setting so the options we have are 15 or 30 minutes 
and the time a browser can be inactive before before requiring you the re-verification so that means uh, 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 so this is not related to the session this is for the overall user if has not logged into your marketing cloud account for 90 days as a best practice so 90 days you can also uh, enable so the customer also the user has to re-verify that particular browser or app again after 90 days and the last one is uh, do not require identity verification for machines inside the whitelist so you can also whitelist few ip address so uh, if any user logs in from that specific ip whitelisted ip addresses they you can exclude them from identity verification so they will not receive the verification code so they'll just directly log in because you have already whitelisted that uh, ip address range and the uh, last one is on export email whitelist so this is to this is regarding export so if you are exporting any data or emails uh, or reports or data or reports from your marketing cloud account you can set this option who only which email addresses can export this uh, which email addresses only can export these uh, reports so this is also like whitelisting your email address who who can download your data or who can download your reports uh, this will help you in restricting this is very uh, useful one also so you don't let all users in your account to export only you want specific uh, email addresses to be whitelisted so only they can export uh, the data from your marketing cloud account so this is export email whitelist looking at the time yeah uh, so the last one this is the last section data management of uh, i'll quickly run through so we have already covered all the security settings and everything so the last one is the data management so here you have ftp accounts file location key management and parameter management so every marketing cloud account will come up come with a a a ftp account so you can have access to it based on so to get the access you have to add the users here so you can add up to three account uh, accounts so these users can log into your ftp instance so the username is the business unit mid so the mid will act as your username and the password you can set it up here and the url to log into your ftp and there's a port number also so to log into your FTP, you use you have to use a different uh, client, different tools like FileZilla or CyberDuck or a few other tools. So you have to you have the URL, the port, the username, and the password. So those details are available under your FTP accounts. And it has an activity. It will list on when was the password changed, when was it created. So this activity will not include. Uh, when you downloaded or imported files or when you exported files from your FTP. This is purely from the FTP account if any password has changed or you created a new user for FTP accounts. So the activity is for the setup of the FTP, not the activities that you do in your FTP folders. Then file locations. Uh, file locations uh, under FTP, what different file locations you have access or you can import or export data from so these are the file locations the most important ones are, are the enhanced ftp the import directory and the export directory so when you create an ftp you it will, it will come automatically come up with an import folder as well as an export folder then you have different external ftp sites also so if, if you want to connect your to an external ftp you set the location as external FTP, or if it's a secured FTP, you'll set it as external as FTP. Then you also have a safe house. So safe house is also uh, a very secured, uh, secured location for your FTP. So how do you use these five locations? So if I have to categorize, or uh, we can categorize them into three different locations. So first one is import and export directory. Uh, so all your file transfers from your marketing cloud account will directly go into import or export. So if, 
any export you do from your marketing cloud account if it crosses 20 mb you have the option to uh, it will directly go into your export folder this is the export directory and if you want to import something into your marketing cloud account from ftp you place that file in your import import file import folder and you can export uh, you can import from there uh, so the file transfer activity will help you to access these locations and transfer the files or even your import file activity will help you that and the next set next category is the external one ftp sftp and ftps so this gives you a marketing cloud account uh, of logging into your ftp of your choice from the external to internal or you can place your uh, from your internal folders you can place into external so two way is possible using this and the last one is safe house so safe house will allow you to import decrypted files so whenever you have uh, encryption or decryption to be done it has to be it will go into the safe house location so uh, so it will whenever you decrypt files it will go into the safe house and from safe house you can come move that file into your import folder and then you can import into your marketing cloud account so the difference is uh, only authenticator users can access safe house locations and these are uh, residing on a highly redundant uh, central storage servers so i have a couple of use cases for this so when you're importing an encrypted file from your safe house location what steps you need to take so first you import the encrypted file into your uh, uh, import directory then use the file transfer activity to decrypt once you decrypt it will go into the safe house and from safe house you use again an import activity to get that file from the safe house the other use case if you are extra if it is coming from an external file so you use the file transfer activity to move the file from external file location to the safe house first uh, if it and if it involves encryption you have to use another file transfer to encrypt uh, to decrypt it if there is no decryption to be done so you don't need the second step it will directly once from the safe house you can directly use the import activity to import the file from the safe house so whenever there is a, a need for decryption you have to use another file transfer activity then you have a uh, key management so these are for your encrypted encrypting and decrypting data uh, so these are the security keys that you can define in your instance these can be used for digitally signing email messages or even uh, for single sign on if you want to the set the keys for them uh, you can set it from the key management And the last one uh, is parameter management. This is for your email. So when you send an email, if you want to set the URLs uh, parameters for the for all the links in your email, so parameter management will help you in that. So th uh, this is the web uh, web analytics connector. So by default, uh, these are the URL parameters that will be appended to your marketing cloud uh, email links that you send out in the in the email links but if you have your uh, google analytics enabled the urls uh, parameters will change to the utm parameters instead of having the these parameters it will change to the uh, utm parameters so from from the certification point of view what you need to know is uh, for example i'm just giving an example so this is not a question but uh, if you want to change your url parameters or the links that are sent being sent out in your edm where do you look out so this is available in your parameter management on the setup so these are the google 360 uh, utm parameters uh, source utm source utm medium campaign term and content so these url url tags will be assigned uh, appended to your uh, email links i know uh, so that's on everything on your marketing cloud setup i know these are a lot of features and a lot of things to look into but uh, you can definitely go back to this uh, recording and see the settings again 
because uh, there's a lot of things to digest from the main idea of uh, this uh, webinar or this uh, is to give you an idea of what options you have in your setup and what you can change yeah so that's from my side uh, should we take some questions i think there are a lot of questions uh considering the time uh, i'll just take few questions uh josna do we still have access to these questions later right because i'll respond to them in the slack channel as well but i'll answer a few here yeah yes manisha so we can uh, have the rest of the answers uh, of the questions answered in our slack channel please um, if you have any other unanswered questions please uh, post them on the slack channel as well that so, was really wonderful insights uh, insightful session manisha as um, we all know setup takes a huge chunk on the exam so it's very important and uh, you covered it very well thank you Manish, you did a wonderful job. You were very detailed, and that was extremely important for a lot of our learners. You did a great job. This was very, very good learning today. Thank you so much. So um, just like JB and Manish just said, if you guys have questions, please feel free to add them to the Slack as we do want to be cognizant of the time that it is right now. It is 10, 10 p.m. So I will just ask maybe like one or two questions, and then I will. Um, probably post a lot of these questions on the Slack channel. Um, so that will be that. Um, so let's just go into one or two of the questions. Um, in approval settings, can we set up only certain emails to go through the approval process? Not all of them, meaning I wanted only urgent communications to be reviewed and approved, but not the regular newsletters. Is this something that can be done? Uh not really so once you enable it it's enabled for all emails that you send out yeah so great. it's not specifically wow. an email yeah okay great and another question to you is um will expert email allow list override a deny in permissions yes uh okay. So whenever you set the export whitelist, it has to be still whitelisted. Even, even if you have the permission in your in your account, if you are whitelisting it, the whitelist will take over. So you cannot export to others. Yeah. Great, great. Um, and uh, I think I'll probably just ask maybe one or two more. Um, are the content builder settings configured globally, or would they need to be done um, per B, um, business unit? Oh, uh, good question. Oh, uh, I will have to check uh, because few settings are different. Uh, so they're specifically referring to content builder, right? So I'll get back to this. Yeah, I'm not okay, that's sure. Okay, that's a good answer. Yeah, that's yes. fine. So we'll get back to that question. And um, what are the best practices for send throttling? And is the send um, is the test send throttles threshold tied to data data extensions? that are marked as testable? So there are two questions in this. So the first best practices for send throttling, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So you use this feature whenever, for example, uh, you're sending out an email to 10,000 customers and there's an action item, there's a CTA button to call your customer care. And your customer care, if 10,000 emails are all sent out at one time, your customer care's call center will be bombarded with all the calls so you have to throttle that from 9 a.m to 6 p.m so everyone so the emails are spread out and the call center uh, calls are also uh, spread out across that day so that is one best practice so it depends on use case so you don't need to use trend send throttle for all your uh, scenarios the other one is on uh, test uh, test threshold right sorry what's the question on that Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Well, um, as you guys can see, it is now 1014. Um, and um, so I will go ahead and let that be the end of our questions for tonight. I will be posting other questions that I see here. I will be posting them online in our um, resources Slack channel, um, channel of the Slack channel. 
as well as please remember that all homework assignments or suggested tasks will be in the homework channel of the Slack channel. If you guys are looking for the slides, all of this will be in tomorrow's email that you guys will see. We look forward to seeing everyone and great job, Nanish. You did a wonderful job. Thank you everyone for coming. No problem. Yeah, we will definitely answer all these questions yeah, in the Slack channel. Yeah. Thank you all. Thank you all for joining us today and um, we'll meet in the next session. Thank you. Good night.